right guys, how's it going? So you join me today on what is a gorgeous day. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's 24 degrees. It's actually warmer here today than it is in Ibiza. So because that's a bit of a rarity, I thought I'd talk to you about four seat convertibles. Today, I'm in a late 2011 Audi A5 convertible. Now I've had several A5s over the years, but they've always been the four cylinder versions, the two liter diesel or the two liter petrol. But the one I'm in today is a little bit special because well, it's quite a rare find in the UK. If you have a quick look on Autotrader, you won't find a single other one to compare it with. This one's a 3.2 liter FSI, which is a naturally aspirated six cylinder, which produces 265 horsepower, which I know in other markets is probably quite common, but here in the UK, it's quite a rare find. With the roof down, I'd rather have the noise of a six cylinder than a four. This, in my opinion, is the one to go for because, well, because of the noise, basically. It's 265 horsepower, which is only 50 horsepower more than you get from the two liter turbo. But because it's a six cylinder, you just get that noise. That noise. Now I quite like four seat convertibles. I've had loads of them over the years, mainly 330s. Um, but yeah, I like them. I just like how practical they are and how easy they are to live with. You don't have to make any sacrifices when you own one. You get a decent sized boot that you can actually put things in. And in this one, you can even fold the rear seats if you're carrying something large, which is a, a clever feature. So I'd always rather have a four seat convertible than a two seat convertible because two seaters, you just, they're difficult to live with. You couldn't have one as your only car. They're perfect if you can afford to have one as a second car that you just take out on the weekends. But yeah, to, to have to use one every day, they're a little bit impractical. Lots of manufacturers these days are overcomplicating the four seat convertible. They're putting complicated folding metal roofs on, which I know will impress your mates when you show them how it all works outside the pub, but I just don't think they look very good. They look awkward. If you look at any um, convertible with a folding metal roof when it's in its up position, it just looks odd. Whereas I think a fabric roof looks elegant still, and it just looks like a convertible. So. Well done to Audi for keeping the fabric roof. And it makes the whole car lighter and less complicated, which can only be a good thing. And you get more boot space. So I like how this is a proper four seater. The two seats in the back are big enough for two adults. I know they might not be too happy about driving all the way down to Torquay in the back, but there's more space than you'd think back there. One thing though with four seat convertibles, if you're driving with the roof down, you can't be sat in the back. You just can't do it because you end up looking like a carnival queen or a dictator on a parade. So the Audi A5 convertible is available with a six speed manual or a CVT automatic, which this one has. Now, Audi have cunningly called it a Multitronic to try and deceive you, but it's a CVT. And I don't like CVTs. They sort of mute down the performance. It's like listening to the, the radio edit of a rap song it's just not the same. I don't know why they didn't put their dual clutch S-Tronic system in here, which would be far better. But anyway, you've got paddles behind the steering wheel so you can change up or down. But again, because it's a CVT, it's not the quickest. It's strange because Audi have dropped a big 3.2 litre engine in this, what's a, basically a sports car. And then they've given you this gearbox that you'd have in a Suzuki Swift. It doesn't really make any sense. So now I'm on a dual carriageway, there's nothing in front of me. It's a gorgeous sunny day. I've got a 3.2 litre engine under the bonnet. And if I put my foot down, there we go, finally, finally, it starts to pick up. Just not as, not as quick to respond as an S-Tronic. And it's annoying because they've got the technology there. They could have done that, but anyway, most people won't care. Most people won't even know, so. Now the six speed manual ones that I've driven do drive very well, but it feels like you're but it feels like you're driving a Golf, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's not really a, a sporty manual gearbox. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but drive one and you'll know what I mean. Nothing wrong with it, but it's just not, not sporty. One thing to mention with this fabric roof, it's really well insulated. So when you're on a dual carriageway like this, there's not an awful lot of wind noise. I know you might think I've made that up, but this microphone that I'm wearing is so sensitive. I could be in the back of a Rolls-Royce Phantom and it would sound like I'm on a crowded commuter train. But yeah, wind noise isn't bad on this at all. So performance-wise, it's not the best gearbox, but 
most people won't know. Those people that do know probably won't care. Because as four seat convertibles go, this is a very good one. It ticks all the boxes, so does it look good? Yes. Does it sound good? Yes. Does it drive well? Yes. What more could you want? The Audi A5 came out in 2008, and it's always been a good looking car. And I think the convertible is even better looking than the coupe. Weirdly though, the A4 convertible and the A5 convertible overlapped for a couple of years. So the main competitor for the A5 convertible at one point was the A4. But I think it's far better than the A4 convertible because, well, the A4 convertible always looked a bit, a bit too conservative, a bit too sensible. It was a bit bland, wasn't it? It wasn't offensive, but it was just a bit bland. Whereas I think this looks far better. It's got curves in all the right places. I love the front end. This is the S-Line model, so you get nicer alloys, you get the LED daytime running lights, which I think look great. I love the rear of the car too, with the twin exhausts. They've just got the shape just right, I feel. It looks sporty, but it also looks elegant. I think that's what people want from a four-seat convertible. I like the interior too. Everything feels good quality, and everything's sensibly laid out, which is typical Audi. I like the multimedia system. It's really easy to operate. Everything's where you'd expect it to be. It's easy to see the screen when the roof's up or when the roof's down because it's sort of covered here and it has its own shade. The folding roof will fold up or down in 15 seconds and you can do that at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour which is a bit of a pose admittedly but quite a clever feature. There are lots of optional extras available but this being an Audi you do have to pay through the nose for them. I mean this one's got pretty much everything but they were all optional extras. So if you're looking for a used one, you might want to do your homework and make sure that the car you're looking at has got everything that you'd want. I mean, in this particular model, I've got heated seats, sat-nav. There is an option where you get a, um, like an SLK, what do they call it? Like a wind, wind scarf or something like that, they call it. So you get a fan here, which can blow warm air on your neck. So when you're driving it with the roof down, when it's a little bit chilly, you won't get pneumonia. I like how the seat belts come out to greet you when you put the ignition on. The seats are really comfortable, they're really padded and thick. In terms of what it's like to drive, it's typical Audi really. It's very pleasant. The steering's too light, but in this S-Line model I've got a nice chunky S-Line steering wheel. But the steering is a little bit vague. There is a little bit of flex through the chassis because when you go over a bump, you do get some scuttle shake. It does wobble a bit, which surprised me for a 2011 car, but they all seem to do it because when you lob off the roof you lose some strength. This has a 0 to 60 time of six and a half seconds which is quite impressive but it never feels dangerously quick or anything it just feels quick enough. So the previous Audi A5 convertibles that I've had have had the two litre turbo four cylinder petrol um, and that is the same engine you get in the Golf GTI but the A5 is substantially heavier than the Golf GTI so I don't know they just don't feel as as athletic as this six cylinder. The two litre turbo does feel a bit more underwhelming. It's just a nice relaxing car to drive. I've got an armrest, I've got a cup holder here for two cups. I've had comments before saying what's the big deal with the cup holders. Now it just annoys me when they don't put them in cars because it's not just for cups. I'm not like some American that always has a big gulp with me. It's 2019, I like to have somewhere for my phone, somewhere for my wallet, somewhere for my keys. And it surprised me that manufacturers don't just include those automatically but a lot don't anyway this does it's got two and that's what I mean about the four seat convertible you want a car that you can use every day and it doesn't and it won't annoy you and this won't running costs across the board aren't high this being the 3.2 is the thirstiest model they make and you'll still average 26 miles per gallon or probably 36 on a run so it's not bad the four cylinder will do 28 miles per gallon or probably close to 40 on a run and they do do two diesels, I don't know about the rest of the world, but in the UK we get the two litre diesel and the three litre diesel. But as I've said before, I wouldn't personally buy a convertible diesel because you want the roof down, you want the noise, you don't want the noise of a diesel engine. Also here in the UK, even this 3.2 litre model isn't in the highest tax bracket, it's only 300 pounds a year to tax. The two litre diesel I think is only 120 pounds a year to tax. So as I said, running costs aren't high. Most A5s are front-wheel drive, but this one uses Audi's Quattro system, so it's four-wheel drive. 
which I don't really see the point of, but it does give you more confidence when you go into corners. And I suppose round here in the winter it might be um, slightly better than a front wheel drive. They do do an S5 and an RS5, which I've never driven, but I've always quite fancied having. If you want something that's more fun to drive, you could buy a 335 BM, but running costs are higher, the boot's smaller, and the ride's firmer. You could buy a Mercedes E-Class. They look elegant, they're more comfortable, but they're not as engaging to drive as, as the A5. Uh, what else could you buy? You could buy a Lexus IS convertible or a, a Volvo C70, but they're sort of left field choices, aren't they? And they've both got the folding metal roof. So I think as an all-rounder, I think the A5 is probably your best bet because it's very easy to live with. It's very civilized, whether you're driving with the roof up or down. Prices here in the UK start at around 8,000 pounds. But if you want one like this, well, I mean, to be honest, if you want the 3.2, good luck finding one. But if you want a nice one with sensible miles in S-line spec, that's auto as well, expect to pay between 10 and 12 grand. But for that sort of money, you have got a very good, sensible used car. Reliability wise, because they share parts with the Audi A4, they're quite a reliable car. But with any used car, just make sure you're buying one that's been looked after with good service history. And you shouldn't have a headache. Just use your common sense. If it looks like it's been lowered or tampered with, I'd probably walk away because it's probably had a hard life. So then, the Audi A5 convertible isn't the sort of car that you'd buy and take around Alton Park on a weekend, but I think you knew that already. What it is then really is more of an everyday car that allows you to drop the roof when the weather's like this. It doesn't feel like a sports car that you can use every day. What it feels like is an everyday car that you can use as a sports car when the weather's like this. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. And yeah, cheers for watching. See you later, guys.